Hi, IMC family. Welcome, 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 welcome to what's going to be just the most beautiful, powerful, of course, always life changing. Oh, it's really so good to see all of you. I just love it. I love just looking at all your faces. I'm in, um, I'm in the mountain house in Idlewild at the moment. And so just I've been really praying for you all a lot like this week. So expect good things. Heaven's Je heaven's moving. Jesus has been like showing me so much. And I've just, I'm excited. I'll share more. But um, I want to give all the time today to, to, of course, Justin Abraham, who is in the house with us, as you all know, I'm so excited <clears throat> for the message that he's going to bring. So get comfortable, open your spirits wide to everything that Jesus has got for you today. It's going to be amazing. Justin, we love you. and We're so happy that you're here. I love you too, Liz. Oh. I love you too. It's good to be back with your group. I um I love this group, beautiful group of people. So today we're going to be talking about angels. And uh, Liz, we were just talking about an encounter you had with an angel, yeah. which you yeah, didn't yeah. mention to the group. Can you just remind everybody? Yeah, I certainly can. Yeah. Do you remember? I think it was the last week or the week before when I was in London. Those of you that were on live or you've yeah, it was um when the I was walking along in Regent's Park when I was in London and it was raining and there was nobody about. And suddenly this, what initially I thought was a man, came bouncing out of the park across the road. Do you remember me sharing? Walked straight up to me. Now, normally that would be really alarming, right? If you're on your own in the middle of <laughs> London and a, a guy comes bouncing towards you and right into your personal space where he did. And I felt complete peace with sparkly eyes and just looked right into my eyes and went, Jesus loves you. Remember? And then as he said, Jesus loves you, the love of Jesus, the love of Jesus just began to pour through me and peace and joy. And I was wrecked and I was staggering, literally just literally spoke to Holy Spirit inside me immediately and said, what was that? Because he just he just like smiled, this beautiful, gentle smile. And I responded immediately and just said, Jesus loves you, too. And he just mm smiled this really kind gentle smile but didn't say anything and then just walked off and I was staggering all over the pavement like <laughs> what the heck totally wrecked and and what happened straight away of course there was a huge impartation that came from him because he was an angel and um it left me and it has left me simplified again back into that foundation of yeah and then, mm. and then immediately afterwards you probably remember me saying holy spirit said to me the solution to everything is knowing that we are loved by jesus nice. Having experience is the solution to everything mm. and then I, was, I just simplified back into that jesus loves me <laughs> jesus loves me <laughs> jesus loves me and jesus then i was loves you me. Yeah, and feeling it for all of us and just That's the beautiful. Power and strength that was coming from that. It was amazing. And then since then, I've really felt from Holy Spirit, it was like a sign of things to come. We're going to start to see angels physically and engage with them as friends, like they did here in the mountain house for all mm. those years. The angels were physically with them as friends. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so That's Justin, it. I can carry on talking and sharing, but I'll stop. I love listening to you. That's I why, love, I, you know. I love angels. I think you know so good what you bring and and you carry it you can you don't just share stories you carry the frequency of love which is really powerful um so yeah well I want to talk about angels today and I'm believing for an increase of angelic because what we honor we attract what we focus on we will see what we magnify increases so it's the law of honor and focus and we're really trying to unravel centuries of dishonor where we split from the Catholic Church, as you know, in the Protestant move 500 years ago. And we we dumped artwork, we dumped the saints, we got rid of um, mystical ec ecstasies and we got rid of angels. And we it was just the Bible. And that was a fundamental error, because when we did that, we ended up with a church that doesn't have the wonder, doesn't have the unpredictable flow. It just has teaching and we become a very teaching orientated community. But God wants to restore us back to the blueprint of family. And family is wild. Family is fun. Family is unpredictable. Family is messy. And we are part of a family. 
and you guys know this already, that when the Bible begins with the word Bereshit, bara Elohim in Hebrew, the word there, Bereshit, starts with the letter Beit. Now, in the Hebrew tr tradition, it's really important, that word, it starts with a B, which means Beit means house or family or in. So everyone's in a family, everyone's in a house, and we are part of a family with angels. And although the conversation's changed a lot, so I've been preaching on angels for like 17 years now, and we were talking about the saints, the conversation's changed a lot. We're now talking about these things, and angels are appearing more frequently. But tonight, today, this afternoon, wherever you are, I don't know, we're leaning into it because I'm hearing the heartbeat of heaven is that we have to come back into the age of wonders where God's presence is so personal, like like Liz's story that she just shared. It's so personal that that angel came up to Liz and said, Jesus loves you. We need angelic encouragement. We need angelic help. We need angelic help, not just in spiritual things, but in practical things as well. So, you know, just recently, I'll give you an example straight at the start. I was uh, taking this mattress. We bought a new bed for our older sons. So I was taking this mattress to my car and it was hard work. I was trying to get it in my car. My car was too small. So I go to Rachel's car. I'm shoving it in. I'm feeling exhausted. I like I say to my angel, his name's Raya, which means friend. Um, it's a Hebrew Hebrew name that he gave me. I said, Raya, you're you're a part of my life. It says he'll give his angels charge over you in all your ways. So I said, Raya, you're part of this. You're part of all my ways right now. I need you to help me with a mattress. So I was saying, will you help me? And guys, this is no exaggeration now. This absolutely flipped my mind when it happened. This was just recently. The mattress folded in half and went into the into the trunk, into the boot, as we call it in the UK. And it absolutely blew my mind because I hadn't even thought about folding it because you normally think mattresses can't fold. It literally folded like a sandwich and went in and my mind was blown. So angels are fun. They're also practical, but they're also friends. And this is what we haven't understood is that we see angels as, OK, healing angel or prophetic angel or church angel. But when you think about Yeshua as the blueprint, he is the blueprint. So, you know, in my book, Beyond Human, the verse in the back here is we stand fully identified in the new creation, renewed in knowledge according to the pattern of the exact image of our creator. So we are made to be just like our creator. And now our creator, Yeshua, is the blueprint. He's the new Genesis, not Adam. We're not looking to Adam anymore. We are looking to Yeshua. Yeshua is the firstborn of a new species, the firstborn of a kainos race, which kainos is the word new, but it means new like nothing ever seen before. So it's not a replacement new. That would be neos. The Greek word is kainos, which means something unprecedented. So if anyone's in Christ, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, they are kainos. They are unprecedented, like nothing ever seen before. Look, the new has come. Now, that new is based on Jesus. Jesus is the blueprint and pattern of our design. He is our authentic revealing of what we are. We are a new creature, a new creation, born of the spirit, born from above, in union with the Trinity. Now, if we put that as the foundation of the gospel, that the gospel is about inclusion in the life of the Trinity, then we, by implication, must become angelic people because the Trinity is an angelic surrounded community. It says all around the Trinity are an innumerable company of angels, innumerable, which means you can't count them, in joyful or happy or festival assembly. So all around the Trinity, when they're revealing their glory in that particular dimension is what's called the angelic canopy. Now in the angelic canopy are many, many types of beings. Um, we know some of this from Jewish mysticism and from the encounters of the saints, but there are Ophanim, Cherubim, Kashmelium. There's all these different varieties, some are lightnings, 
some are glory, some are wheels. Is the high up the heavenly chariot? There's the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, and there are messengers of his face and messenger angels, ministering spirits. And then there, there are angels in the councils of the Lord and angels then that come into this realm. And angels have told me that it's one of the greatest honors and greatest assignments you can ever have is to be a protector and guardian of a human being because human beings are the offspring of the divine. We literally carry the resonance or emanation or what the Hebrews call the spark, the Yechida, they call it. We have the spark of the divine. Jesus is the, Jesus is the light that lights the heart of every man. So within us is a spark which is fused into your body where you become a living soul. And it's literally we are the offspring or children of the divine of Yahweh of of the source which is incredible for the angels because angels have created beings animals beings in the stars the cosmos other dimensions there's all these created beings but we are beings that are God's offspring now that's a very unique function that we're the ecclesia now because of that angels take great delight and pleasure in participating in your life it's one of their greatest honors so for example Rhea the angel that um that's with me and looks after me and stands with me he said that he used to work in the councils of heaven he was there but he had this assignment to come with me and now that these these conversations are, are phenomenal because I think there are things that we need to know and things we need to engage with because we're in the age of the revealing of the mysteries. So you might be saying, well, why are we talking about all this now? The reason we're talking about all this now is because we're in the new creation age. So remember, we're fully identified in the new creation. So if you're from the in the old creation, we didn't know this stuff. In the old creation, we were separate from heaven. In the old creation, we were fallen, linear, time bound and death bound and sin bound. Now Jesus has come and everything has changed. Now we are in a new creation. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone. One translation says the old is finished and gone. And it says, look, the new has arrived. Another translation of that verse says you are in a brand new world. So now we're not in the same world as everyone else. They're still under the old government time. They're under the old times. They're under seasons. They're under separation thinking. They're under a limited lifestyle. But we who are permanently united into Christ, who have joined ourselves in union with him, we now live in a new world world a new creation and we have angelic community this is staggering and if you're beginning to see what i'm seeing your mind will be opening right now because when i first started about talking about angels i didn't know anything about them but because i've honored them i've encountered so many varieties i've encountered the wheels of god with sparks i've encountered lightnings i've been photographed with lightning i've been photographed with heavenly lights i've seen them in my room they've talked to me they've given me things they've helped me find lost things i've seen healing angels prophetic shimmering angels wonder angels angels a gold dust angel that that covered people in gold dust and and this is just the beginning because we're moving into an age where we have to realize just like liz's encounter that it's going to be seen see in the old creation it was veiled in the new creation the veil has been torn open and now we can see it's like oh he's ripped the heavens open at the cross Oh, reopened and restored what was lost. So Paul says this. He says, so we look to the unseen because it's eternal. We want to gaze into that realm. We set our mind on things above. He says crazy things like Paul said this. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the new Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels in festival gathering, to the church of the firstborn, the saints made perfect. He says, you have come. Now, this is the thing. Often with Christians, they're in a meeting, they're worshipping. But what we don't realize is we can shift dimensions. Now, I talk about it in my Beyond Human book. Jesus used to do this. I'll give you an example. 
in John 17, when he prayed, the scriptures say Jesus lifted his eyes to the heavens and prayed. It's a beautiful line in English. It doesn't mean much. You kind of think he just looked up in in the Greek. It means this. He was hoisted up to where God God is. So in other words, when he, sh- he shifted into that realm, he turned into that realm. Uh, just like John in the book of Revelation, where it says he turned to see. So he turned into the kingdom realm and he prayed that John 17 prayer in the spirit it, with the father in that realm. See, we have the capacity to access these dimensions by faith and union. This is the wonder of the new creation that we're entangled into Jesus. So Paul says this staggering thing. He says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. In other words, you and me are one spirit with him. We have got a capacity to be in one spirit joined in one spirit, move in one spirit and access wherever Jesus is. So you are seated. I hope this isn't too much. Is this too, am I going too far out? Or I always feel like when I'm speaking to dial it down sometimes because um, for me, this is kind of normal. But when I start talking like this, I sometimes feel like people feel it's too much. It's not too much for me. Um, I've been living like this for a long time and I'm used to shifted dimensions. I'm used to angels and engaging angels. And but I know it's a shock for some people and I don't want you to feel shocked in a bad way. I want you to be excited about this because you and me are exactly the same. We're both new creations. We're both joined to Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Hamashiach, the Messiah. We're one body with him. I can see your messages popping up. Thank you saying go for it. It's good because if we were in the same room together right now, angels would start interacting because when I talk about them, they love it. They love it. Now, I really believe this message is from the Lord. I'm very bold in what I preach because I believe we need to start teaching on heavenly things. The problem with the modern day church is you go to your church service and we have these lovely encounters with God in worship, but then they just teach And it's very much earthbound. So they'll be teaching you principles of life, if you like. But, you know, our kindness, new creation life is not just that dimension. Yes, we can teach on earth. But Jesus said in John 3, how I want to talk about heavenly things. And the word there is everything above the earth, the cosmos, the stars, the throne and the realms above and beyond. So Jesus wants to have a big conversation with us. But in church, we have this tiny conversation. We have a tiny conversation and Jesus is saying, hey, guys, I want to talk to you about heavenly things. I want to show you my world. I want you to be with me where I am and to see my glory. My friends are your friends. My realm is your realm. My innocence is your innocence. My life. We've got this massive, massive life. And then Christians go back to this tiny, I'm struggling, I'm down life. Now, most Christians are depressed because you're not engaging the angels. You're not engaging the joy of the Father. You're not engaging the the cloud of witnesses. You're not entering into meditation and ascension and ecstasies and raptures. We've been given all this stuff. But we've lived in a generation that is so tethered to the earth. We're so earthly that, you know, it doesn't shock anyone and people are falling asleep. We need the shock of the angels. You know, uh, one time I was speaking in a in a in an Anglican church, a beautiful old Anglican church in Gloucester, and the angels came and half of the chairs got knocked on the floor and people were spinning round as they were getting delivered and healed. We had drug addicts crying. We had homeless people in there. There was chaos. Now, the people who ran the church were really offended at this. <laughs> but I can tell you now, I wasn't offended because we saw about 40 or 50 people turn to Jesus that day. We saw miracles. We saw um, gold dust outbreaks on these teenagers. We saw incredible things happen. And we need that kind of thing again. See, we're not used to the ways of heaven. But if you look at the saints of old, like I love Mariah Woodworth Etta, she would have people in trances and ecstasies for days at a time. She had a radius of the presence that went uh, 50 miles. Sometimes people would be falling into trances. And then there's people like William Branham, Billy Branham. Look at him. He's got the angelic halo on his head. 
It was photographed when it came in the room. And he used to walk in such a realm of miraculous that one time he did an eight day healing line. Eight days he healed people with the angel of the Lord present with him. When the angel of the Lord was with him, he could access realms of knowledge and healing and wisdom and power because he was functioning as a son, because a mature son functions with the angelic functions with the saints functions as a family wow Woo. Woohoo. yeah wow 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 so one of the shocks for me is i studied church history for like i don't know for so long now i've forgotten i've read all the books on the saints i've studied the catholic saints the desert fathers the celtic saints the monastics i've gone through it all the revivalists god's generals the intercessors and what i've discovered is they were all walking with angels that you cannot separate the church from angels now Randy Clark says this amazing thing. Now, I love Randy Clark. He's a missionary to Brazil. Many of you will know him. He does these massive meetings and incredible healings happen. He came to Cardiff near where I live and I went to the meeting to listen to him. And he said, I rarely talk on this, but I want to talk on angels, he said. And he said this incredible line. He said, when we were baptized in the spirit of Pentecost, we were also baptized into the angels. I had never heard someone say that before because he said at Pentecost, what came at Pentecost? We had wind and fire. What does scripture say is wind and fire? It says my messages, my angels are winds and fire. And what R Randy Clark said was, and I really trust Randy Clark. I believe he's one of the most authentic, scriptural, Jesus orientated people you'll ever meet that he must have led millions to the Lord by now. So I listened to someone like that. And he said, we were also baptized into the angels. He said, we were baptized into winds and we were baptized into fire. Now, you might say there's only the baptism of the spirit or baptism of water. That's not true. In scripture, there are several baptisms. It talks about being baptized into the cloud of Moses. So you could be immersed many, many times. You can be baptized with fire, you know. So anyway, Randy Clark shared this and he talked about how how the winds of the angels will come in the meetings when the miracles are happening. He talked about a time where the plants behind him were all blowing like that and there was no wind in the room. And, and, and in this one meeting he had where God said, call on the angels, the wind was blowing so much, everything was moving. One of the guys who wasn't a Christian ran outside to see if it was a tornado. Outside was perfectly calm. But in the meeting were these whirlwinds. Guys, we need the days of the whirlwinds again. We need the days. Even our conferences can be conferency. But I, when I speak, I make room for the angels. I was just in Cedar Creek in Missouri. And in my two sessions, God broke out on the people. One person was drunk for 10 hours. And all I did was made room for God, made room for him to move. It's not about Justin or the Justin show. It's about heaven coming. And I honor these angels. And before I get up to preach, I spend time with them saying, joy, angels come. And I and I engage the mountain of, of that realm. And I engage the, the, the realm of, of ecstasy and rapture. And often when I'm preaching, somebody will get so overwhelmed by God and the lightnings that they run around the room. And it happened in Cedar Creek. There was this one woman. She was vibrating. She was caught up. I was standing by her and I knew it was going to happen. I could feel it building. She couldn't handle it anymore. And she just ran around the conference room and the whole room's going crazy. This is the kind of stuff that happens when we make room for heaven. Now, some people go, oh, that's nice for occasions. No, that is the way in act, Acts and in Scripture that they live. Branham, William Branham could not do ministry without his angel. His angel was assigned to him by the Lord. Now, some people say to me, we don't need angels. We have the Holy Spirit. Well, let me say this to you. Jesus is the blueprint. And Jesus said, I am Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder was a place where angels and ascend and descend. He said to Nathaniel, from now on, you'll see the angels, uh, the heavens open and angels continually. So Jesus moved in it. In the amplified version, it says this of, of Jesus in the wilderness. It says angels ministered to him continually. Do you know that even in the wilderness, 
Jesus had angels. And then you look through Jesus's life. Angels are involved in everything. His birth, there's the choir, there's the angels, there's Gabriel announcing his birth. Then you have uh, angels with him in his ministry. Then when he's going to the cross and he's feeling discouraged, even though he's God and he's in the Trinity, he still has an angel come and ministers to him when he's sweating blood and ministers life and love to him when no one else was there for him. That's how much God loves angels. God loves angels. Angels are not lower beings. They are all different species and languages. There are different kinds of beings. There are angels in the cosmos. There are angels in the earth. There's an angel, it says in Revelation, in the sun. There's an actual angel in the government of solar systems. There's angels over churches in the book of Revelation. It says to the angel of the church, write this, because the angels work with us so closely that they carry the blueprint for the church with us. Now, often when I'm traveling and I go to different nations, when I'm in a church, I'll engage the angel of the church because the angel will communicate to me what this church is about, because the angel co-labors with the leadership team to land the blueprint of heaven to create the life and energy and frequency of that particular ecclesia. In other words, you cannot separate the angelic from churches. You cannot separate the angelic. So like, um, you know, Liz Wright's bought this beautiful house where the ladies of the golden lampstand used to be. There'll be an angel and a company of angels. Actually, there's angelic dimensions. I can see them now. Many worlds connected because it was a trans dimensional ministry connected to the blueprint. Now, when someone says, I am willing to be responsible for the blueprint, the angel will partner with you. So the angel will work with you when you activate it. So angels often are not forcing themselves on us because they're servants. It says they are ministering spirits. Often people will not have angelic encounters because you're not making room for angelic encounters. And because they're servants, they don't presume upon us. So there's like a culture of humility and honor where we're, we're made powerful. So like if you want to live a life where you don't have wonder or angels or ecstasy or union, if you want a life where that you don't have those, God's fine with that because he loves you just as you are. And it's not about who's better than anyone else. It's about how much do you want Je John 10.10, 10, that Jesus came, that you might have life in abundance till it overflows. Now, my desire is I want an overflow in life. You know, I've watched enough Netflix. I've watched enough movies. I've traveled around the world. I want a Christological, multidimensional, cosmic life. I want a life that's overflowing. I want to see youth miracles. I want to see, I don't want to just see healings. I want to see people's bodies get younger. I want DNA miracles. I want transmutation miracles. And I want to move in a realm that's beyond what we're walking in right now. We're not going to do it unless we open up to the angelic. Now, Another thing people say in church is you can't talk to them. That's the most ridiculous line for a start. That's not in the Bible. There is not a verse for that. That's a made up humanistic religious thing. The whole Bible from cover to cover is people talking to angels. It even says the old covenant was given by angels to Moses. Paul says this when he's writing his letters. He said, I stand with the Lord and with the angels writing this to you. So Paul was with angels when he was writing. John was taken on a tour of heaven in the book of Revelation by angels. Angels gave all the prophecies to Daniel, gave all the prophecies to Zechariah. The, the angels were involved in everything. In fact, the whole of the church is for the angelic ground to manifest God's wisdom to principalities and powers in the cosmos. So even the role of the church, the ecclesia is connected to revealing love and the new creation to all the cosmos, all the beings, all the principalities, all the powers. In fact, even spiritual warfare on the earth is all because of a fallen being, Lucifer, who's an angel, and the watchers who came down in Noah's time, um, time and Enoch's time, is all angelic. So you've got a church right now that says, don't talk about angels. But my question to them is, well, how can you talk about anything? 
because Jesus came to destroy the work of the evil one who was a fallen angel. The whole cosmos is full of angels. Every star system galaxy is all full of angels. Someone's putting on there that Lord is called the Lord of hosts, which literally means these higher dimensional beings. Um, he's the Lord of spirits. And we're in the middle of a, an angelic story. We're in a story of a battle over the consciousness of our species to, to bring us back to the blueprint of love. And you have a church system that says, don't talk about angels. Probably talking about angels is one of the most important topics because we're meant to demonstrate the multifaceted wisdom of Yahweh to them. They're looking, it says they're looking in on us. They're looking in and they want to participate with us. And they're waiting for the restoration of all things. And they are ministers for those who are inheriting the new creation. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So in my Beyond Human book, I called my chapter on angels, I called it angelic community. Because, because their community, and I, and I say here why, because Ephesians 2.13, now, wow, everything has changed. You have discovered yourselves to be located in Christ. What once seemed so distant is now so near. His blood reveals your redeemed innocence and authentic genesis. That's the mirror in, uh, interpretation of the Bible. Wow. So how close are all these angels to us? Well, Jesus already answered that. He said a human being is Jacob's ladder. Now, think about this. Jacob's ladder is from the Old Testament where Jacob's asleep on a rock and he in a dream, he sees a ladder going up into the heavens with angels going up to God with angels moving. Now, it's an amazing, amazing encounter. He wakes up and goes, God was in this place and I didn't know it. So what is that story about? That story is about your consciousness, is that God is in this place. The whole world is full full of his glory. God is in this place, but you didn't know it. So awakening to the angels is awakening to reality that you're never know, you're never alone. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit inebriated, a little bit inebriation coming right now. Wow. Because Papa God just loves this and the angels do, because I tell you what, I could give you prophecies from all the saints on this, but I'll give you one from Rick Joyner. Rick Joyner said, we are coming into a time where encountering angels will no longer be thought of as a significant event. Encountering angels is going to be so normal. It'll be just like, like Liz was saying earlier, I'm in the park and an angel said, Jesus loves you. And you'll go, oh, that's lovely. And you'll meet angels and you'll see angels. And I tell you what, they're not just servants. They can also help us. If you want a verse for that, it's um, Daniel. Daniel wanted to know the mysteries of the dreams he was having. And Gabriel shows up and says, I've come to make the vision clear to you. I've come to explain what will take place. And angels can come and explain things to you. Now, somebody who had this more than anyone was Enoch. Enoch um, walked with the angels and his life was spent with the angels. This is the lost book of Enoch, which is the Ethiopic book of Enoch. This is the one that precedes the time of Jesus that the Jews read as well. And in the lost book of Enoch, in the Ethiopic book of Enoch, Enoch says, I was caught up with the watchers of heaven and everything I learned, I learned from them. So there's a company. Yeah, it says this in, in chapter one of the book of Enoch. I, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens. He saw Jesus. It's amazing. If you read the book, he sees him over and over again, which the angels have shown me. And from them, I heard everything. And from them, I understood what I saw from the angels, but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is to come. So Enoch said that he walked with the angels. They took him on tours of the cosmos. They took him on tours of the storehouses of heaven. They showed him the different dimensions and realms. They showed him the future acts of mankind. They showed him the mystery. They showed him the tree of life. They showed him the councils and courts of heaven. They showed him the, the trinity and all these beautiful things. But this is the thing. Get this, guys is that Enoch said that the things that he saw was not for his generation. 
he lived in the days of Noah, where everybody went a bit crazy. <laughs> they all went nuts. And you have the Watchers and Nephilim and crazy technology and chaos and DNA manipulation. In that time, he was a person who walked with God in union. And this is the blueprint for where we're going, is that we walk in union, in loving union, in oneness with Yeshua, with the Trinity, with Ruach, HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Wow. 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 And as we walk with them, we begin to walk with their family too. And their family does consist of Michael and Gabriel and Uriel and Raphael and these other beings, which are so wild and crazy, like the, the wheels and the glory angels and the Ophamin, the, the Chayot. And it's such a realm of bliss and wonder. Yay. So I'll just share an encounter with you. I'm almost done. I haven't even used my notes. I just spoke from my heart because I wanted to speak from my heart. And um, I could speak all day about angels because I've 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 loved them and they've loved me. And um, when I first started speaking about them, I was a bit nervous because no one was talking about them. Now I don't really mind what people think because I've walked with them for so long that I love them so much and they love me and they've helped me so much that that it doesn't matter what anyone thinks anymore. Because when I first started talking about them, I didn't have history with them, but now I have. Now I've got 20 years of history with them and because they're, they're so dear to me and I love them so much, I don't care if you what people think because once you love someone, and this is what I didn't know as well, is that it's all about love, you know? Even the angels have taught me this. You know, I had this angel show up in my house. Um, his name was, um, I can't remember what his name was now. It was uh, Jasher or something like that. I think it was Jasher. And he said he, he was one of the treasury angels. And sometimes these angels will come and you have breakthroughs in wealth and finances. So he came into my room with two other angels. And he said to me, he said, what people don't understand is that um, you are all wealthy. He said, you live in wealth. He said, you are immersed in wealth. It's about how you think. And it was so beautiful. And he was saying that wealth is a mindset. And he said, when you hold a baby, you're wealthy. When you have a friend, you're wealthy. When you're clothed. And, but he said, but I will teach you about wealth as well. And this is an amazing thing. These angels can come along and teach you. Like I had one angel. I was speaking in Seattle Revival Center. And um, I went into the room before the conference and there was this huge shimmering waterfall angel. Most of his body, it was like 30 foot or whatever. And at the top of it had a beautiful, smiley, big face. But the rest of it was like shimmers. And I took one of the elders in with me and I said, there's your angel. So we stood on the stage and came under the angel and she was encountering the angel. God had told them they were going to meet their angel for the first time. When I was there, this angel called Breaker taught me about the courts of God. So I'm in this laughter that's coming from him. And he says to me, did you know that the laughter of God is the courts of God? That the laughter of God goes through the whole of the cosmos and that creates the justice of God. So she said the justice of God, he said, is rooted in the laughter of God. And he gave me a verse for it. And this is the amazing thing. Wow, this is what, what blows me away. They'll often give me verses or quotes or tell me things. So he's quoted where it says in the Psalms, he sits in the heavens and laughs and judges his enemies. So the laughter of God, the angel told me, is in the room right now. When you turn into it, it forms justice for you. And you can engage the laughter of God to manifest his justice, which is the courts of heaven manifested through you as a king. So he was saying all this to me and I was learning this from the angel. So everything I just taught you, I learned from angels. I've learned many things from angels and many things from the saints. For me, when I go and pray and spend time with the Lord, I spend time with my family as well. So my, the saints, uh, the people who've gone on before us, different ones will connect to you depending on your destiny book. So, for example, with Liz engaging the ladies of gold and 
the, that building, those saints will actually appear to Liz because she's connected now to the blueprint through space and time. I call it the golden strand. So going through time is the golden strand. So if you honor um, something that someone did and you connect with it and you want to help fulfill it, the angels are allowed to work with you as well that worked with them. So because uh, Liz has bought this property, the angels that worked with the ladies of gold will now be allowed to work with her as well because she's now working with the blueprint because what the angels do is they serve the blueprint with us. So there's a blueprint of your life that you'll have joy. There's a blueprint for your, your work, your nation, whatever. They serve the blueprint with you as co-laborers. Wow. Way. Ooh. Wow. I have so much to say on this subject, but time's almost out. So one, I'll just share a couple of stories to land and then we'll engage one of the angels together. I'll show you how to do it. If you want to, you're powerful. Remember that even with everything I'm saying, you're powerful to disagree with me. Although this is my personal experience and I'm confident in it. You know, I learned a lot by reading older books. They helped me uh, like um, open my eyes, Lord. Uh, this one, this was the one that got me going, Gary Oates. This is a fabulous book, and um, we've got him on our YouTube channel if you want to hear the message. But my first group encounter with angels was honoring this book. I'd heard Gary Oates speaking on how God opened his eyes. He was a pastor that was kind of feeling burnt out. Stuff was happening in the church, and he just wanted to see. And he was with Randy Clark, and he looked up one day in the service, and he could see angels dancing on the stage. And he went out of his body in an ecstasy. And from then on, he could see angels and was moving in miracles. So I was honoring this book and I was walking back and forth. I actually had a CD at the time. I don't know if you guys remember the days where people gave teachings on CDs. And I'm saying, I honor Gary Oates. And I was with a friend. I was saying, we love Gary Oates. And we were going, angels, come. Angels, come. And me and my friend, we were just walking back and forth in his house just praying, saying, we love angels, we want angels. And we were saying, Lord, we, we remember Columba of Iona, who used to walk with angels, the life of St. Columba. And we remember Roland Buck, Roland Buck, and how angels would come and visit his house over and over again. And we remember Enoch. And what we were doing was we were speaking out into the atmosphere. We remember, we remember that we are an angelic family, that we walk with angels, that the saints walk with angels. <laughs> and I'm saying this with my friend, and suddenly the presence of the Lord is like a thunderstorm. It's so thick. And suddenly it felt like a thousand people were standing in the room with us. Now, my friend and I, he was he's a really big guy, big muscles, a bodybuilder. We we freaked out so much. This is so funny because this was like 20 years ago uh, that we grabbed each other and we stood in the corner of the room hugging each other. And we could hear the floor creaking. It was a wooden floor. We could hear the floor creaking as the angels were moving in the room and there was fragrances and presents. And these two grown men, it would have looked so funny. I'd like to see this again. Maybe God will show it to me in a you know a replay of my life or something. Because you've got these two grown men, we're praying for angels, we're asking for angels, and then we're in the corner together because <laughs> we're so freaked out. But um it was a beautiful moment. And that was the beginning of me really, really experiencing angels. And I feel like I know nothing because the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. So even though I've experienced the angels, I'd say I'm an amateur and I'm OK with that because in Hebrew thinking, the doors in the floor, it says, and we are meant to be humble in this. So even if we've known a lot about angels, we still know nothing. There are many species, languages. In fact, in one ecstasy, I went to the library room of heaven and I saw the chronicles of the angels and they had volumes and volumes and volumes of stories. They have cultures, languages, worlds, realms, dimensions, history. And I was blown away because we think of angels as just being these little servants. They've actually got cultures. They've actually got dimensions. They've actually got realms and they've got chronicles, the chronicles of the angels. So and these go back to the beginning of creation, because remember, they were created before the earth. It says when the earth was created, 
the the, the sons of God shouted for joy, the, the, the stars sang. So they were there at the beginning watching us being formed. So these are ancient beings. I later found out God makes more of them. I saw in ecstasies where there's a realm where the Lord is birthing spirits. He's the father of lights. And when he, when he's in this form of the father of lights, there's just spirits emanating out of him all the time. In fact, um, Enoch's one of his main names for for Yahweh was the Lord of spirits, the Lord of spirits, because he's constantly creating worlds. The universe is expanding. He's creating more humans. And there's all these realms coming out of him. And I don't know about you, but I want to know my father's business. I want to know my father's house. I want to know what my papa does. I want to know what my role is and function with these beautiful, beautiful beings. And I'm not going to wait for the church to tell me it's okay, because Jesus has already said, my world is your world. You're a co-heir of all things. You're in me. I'm in you. You're seated in me in heavenly realms. Wow. Wow. So I'm just going to share one last story. So I was praying late at night, uh, just engaging the Lord. Rachel had gone to bed and I was with a friend. And uh, this incredible presence of the Lord came in the room. And when it initially came in, I wanted to leave the room because it was uncomfortable. It was like that strong. And then I relaxed and I kind of realized this Papa God. Um, but you had to kind of go into it and lean into it because it was so strong. There was this uh, realm came in the room where lots of things happened. I won't tell you all of it because I'm not sure you'll believe me because it was just so extraordinary. I'll share a little bit. There were lights moving around the room. There was cloud. It was unreal. We were having a genuine beyond the veil experience of Yahweh. Now, when this was happening, I heard thousands and thousands of voices of children laughing. Even telling you now, it gives me chills. Thousands of voices laughing of joy. It sounded like those old Toronto meetings where everyone's laughing, but they sounded like children. Children laughing, but thousands. And I could hear it. I'm sitting there wondering what's going on. There's these lights. There's these clouds. I'm holding on to a cushion. I, I grabbed a cushion. I was so a pillow. I was so like freaking out. But I was OK. But I was new to this. You know, you have to realize this was many years ago. Then I heard these angels speak audibly. And this is what they said. They said, when a voice said, this is so exciting. This is so exciting. So even the angels get excited by us engaging them. And then another voice spoke and said, they are starting to believe. They are starting to believe. And then another person laughed and I heard a voice say, they have no idea what's coming for them. <laughs> I've thought about that encounter often because they were so excited. They said they're starting to believe and we have no idea what's coming for us. I can tell you now, guys, we are coming into days of awe and wonder. There's no, no going back. God's, God is reformatting the church. We're not going back to the old teaching age or the old conference age or the old Sunday service age. We are, it's the age of the Ecclesia rising. And the Ecclesia rising is something totally different. It's the order of Melchizedek. It's those that walk with angels. It's Philangelus. That's the name for people who walk with angels, Philangelus. It's the age of Melchizedek. It's the age of Sal. Uh, wow ascension okay i'm landing it there but i'm going to give you a quick if you're willing to give me your trust for just the last 10 minutes i'm going to show you how simple it is to begin a relationship with your angel now you may never have encountered your angel before but they love you and they know you and honestly there's no judgment they're not sin conscious they they are joy conscious now don't feel guilty that you've never spoken to your angel. It doesn't matter if you're 80 or 90, how old you are. It's never too late to begin. Because remember, we're just children anyway. So our whole life, we're just kids here. It's just the beginning. So we're going to do an engagement with the angel. Now, to encounter the angel, you have to change the consciousness that you're in. So you have to turn into the spirit. We do that through meditation. Meditation is a technique to bring awareness. That's all it is. It means you let go of tomorrow, you let go of the past, 
and you come back to this moment. So you shift consciousness by becoming relaxed, feeling your feet on the floor. So you come into your body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So anything that's not now, just say not now. Any thought that takes you out of this present, say not now. Come back to the awareness of love and you breathe. Now breath is, is actually God's name in Hebrew. We breathe in the hay, the ruach. You take a deep breath, you relax your face, you let the tension out of your body, so you're coming into rest. It all moves through rest, it all moves through love. So take a deep breath. And then let that go. Let all the tension go. Breathe in again, just focus on the sensation of the breath fully. As you return to your temple, you return to the Holy Spirit. Now we're gonna breathe one more time. You might feel a shift in already, I am. So we're relaxing and we're breathing you in, Yahweh. I breathe you in. You're in me. And I'm in you. We are one. Say that, I'm in you. You're in me. We are one. Now open up very gently. And make your senses just bigger than yourself right now. Become aware of the space around you. Expand your heart very gently. Keep breathing. Keep resting and enjoying this. Now is beautiful. This is not forced. A child can do it. Now I want you to begin to sense around you there's the familiar spirit of the angel. It's so familiar that you hardly notice it. Just very gently. Wow, I can feel my angel straight away. Very gently feel the angel that loves you. There may be more than one. You might feel a tingling sensation or a sense of a presence. I can, in this moment, I can feel the angel manifesting on my right hand side. It loves you. I want you to feel that beautiful light. It's, a, it's from Yahweh. It's familiar and loving and just open up to it, interface with it. Breathing and enjoying this moment, all is well. You don't have to do anything. It's not a competition. You're just getting your hand shaking, your angel. Hello, beautiful angel. Now tune in, sense it and feel it more. And you can ask it a question, okay? You can ask it in your mind or speak it out. It doesn't matter because they can hear a heart. Um, you can ask it a question, like one question you can ask it is, what have you done for me in the past? Or how are you today? Or what do you think of me? And very gently let that angel and Holy Spirit communicate to you. Maybe there was a time where that angel saved your life. Or maybe it helped you meet a person or get a job. Just very gently, in the beauty of now, open up to the angels and give them permission to share their story with you because they love you. They love you very much. And just gently listen and breathe. If you feel intense, just breathe and relax. You know, you can spend as much time doing this as you want, but you can look for other angels that are with you. Really, it's just a simple exercise you can do at any moment. We're running out of time, but you can you could do this exercise after the call. Just sit in a chair, breathe and relax, enter into union, then sense the angel. I can feel my right hand vibrating right now. It's tingling. Thank you, Lord, for the angels that are with us. 
I know my angels called Rhea. Thank you, Rhea, for all you've done, taking care of me. Thank you for laboring with me, for Yeshua. Thank you, healing angels and joy angels that work with me. I honor you. And I speak to heaven now, and I speak to you, Jesus. I say, Lord, we are those who want to walk with angels. We say yes to angels. We say we love angels. And we want to be those who walk with angels. That every day, every day we walk with them. Every day we sense them. Every day we, we are taught and learn from them, even as we learn from each other and we learn from you, Yahweh. That we are one family. We are one family. Very gently breathe. You come back to yourself now. You might want to rub your hands. Sometimes if you're in the spirit, it's so intense. You've got to just come back out of it. So I just rub my face sometimes on my hands and, and relax. There we go. It's that simple. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, there's a lot more I could say about angels, but go and explore them. Go and spend time with them. Go and engage with them. Uh, it's beautiful. It will bring you joy. They'll bring you courage. They'll bring you wine. Um, they will also <laughs> sometimes play uh, jokes on you and all sorts of fun. Angels are beautiful and you're beautiful. So enjoy your life because it's all about joy. It's all about joy. Amen. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll hand it back to Liz. Oh my gosh, Justin. Oh man. Amen. I'm really wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> it started to go deeper and deeper and deeper. It did, it's amazing. Yeah. Just amazing, isn't it? Like I love, you know, I could just feel when you were speaking, Justin. I'm sure you guys could, like, how loved we are. The realm that we now live in, you know, everything that we see in the life of Jesus. I love how you lay a foundation all the time of Jesus, you know, he's, mm. he's the prototype, he's the unveiling, right? Yeah. Who are, like you said, I love those scriptures and how mm. everything we see in the life of Jesus, right, is the mm. life that we are privileged to live now. And we're mm. just, it's not that it's not happening around us, it's just we're being tuned into the realization of what's happening around That's us. Right. More That's more right. That's right. Justin, we honor, yeah, we, you know, we honor what we honor in heaven, it, it increases when we honor the mm. angelic, when we honor the cloud of witnesses. You know, they're yeah. our family, like you said. This is the this is the realm we live in now. This yeah. is new creation life, right? These are this, we are in the kingdom of heaven, living in mm. an earthly experience. Mm. But oh, holy, 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 mm. and there's just so much more. And I I love the angels. <laughs> There's been some amazing things going on here this week, which I'll share. I'm going to be in Winchester next week, so I'll I'll carry on and just we'll we'll go deeper into just what you've been sharing today, Justin. Yeah. And, yeah. and the stories around the Francis Metcalf's house. You know, as you all know, we've been on a journey together, getting the house back in the kingdom, and just so I've already been engaged twice by the the mm. what I understand is the senior angel that was assigned mm. to the ministry. And so, um, and and obviously, like you said, just in the, mm. the the candlestick ladies have, you know, very much been here. And there's just it's the realm, everything that was opening up that the Lord wants to now move forward again in our time. You know, like, yeah. just the angels are very involved, and of course, here for fifty years, you know, the the women mm. had the angels physically in the house with them. The women mm. and the men, you know, they just were their friend, and that's the testimony. They were their friend, mm. and they just were what they enjoyed the worship because they were worshippers. And there's more. I'll tell you more. I'll tell you more because I'll talk for an hour. I'll tell you more next. Well, week. I think it's such a big topic, and I do think we need mm. to give more focus to this because you could feel the realm on this. The realm on it's incredible, and you know the whole Argentina outpouring that was massive was all angelic angels would roll people around and thousands would, would come into the lord even if you look at the great healing revivalists like say catherine coleman she worked yeah. with all these angels people don't yeah. realize that and yeah. the more we work with angels the more we'll see the wonders because yeah. they're workers of wonders and we need the age of wonders don't we liz yeah absolutely we're, I, I believe we're in it you know we're yeah. in it we're moving we are being awakened 
fully now so that we can operate as king as citizens of heaven you know in yeah. our true identity in the fullness of that privilege and responsibility and yeah. joy and i love what you said as well about the children when you had the angelic en- encounter that hearing yeah. all the children's laughter and the joy you know when i sat with james maloney and he was sharing some of the testimonies that's one of the things that used to happen all the time when the ladies here worshipped and the men they worshipped the realm was open above them and mm. they would always they'd be hearing children laughing. They'd hear the children in heaven laughing yeah. all the time. It was very, very common. It's just <laughs> beautiful. Oh, I'm so hungry. Like, I want more now. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Liz, when I heard these thousands, it sounded like thousands of children all laughing at once. It was the most amazing sound ever. Yeah. And it just filled the room. And then these voices said, this is so exciting. Yeah. So somehow we excite the angelic as well. When we engage, they get excited. And... I loved it when they said they have no idea what's coming for them. We have no idea what we're dealing with here. This is big. We don't. <laughs> we, don't. we don't. And I just love, like, I could feel the love of the Father for all of us and how precious we are to him. You know, we are such precious cargo that carry the spark of, mm-hmm. of God. I love that, you know. Mm-hmm. We don't know who we are, do we? We know this much. Yeah. Oh, it's just we're so holy so precious yeah with offspring of god that's right um, just mind-blowing who we are our value is just beyond compare and how the angels i love that how they love us and, and protect us and mm-hmm. which i've experienced you know t- many times and just they want us they want to be in our lives they want they to do. be our friends and they they are they're assigned mm-hmm. by heaven and it's just the part of the rich experience like we see in like the life of jesus like you said if you look at his life it was full of the angelic from beginning to end in his earthly it experience. was his whole life and everything before the earth and after the earth it's all full of angels yeah angels yeah. are a big part of, of what's going on in the whole cosmos in heaven yeah you know yeah and, and i love um, what you yeah. said as Sorry, Justin. No, carry on. No, I was just saying, I love what you said. It's all, and I'll finish with this because we'll we'll let you jump off. But I I love what you said about everything's accessed through union and faith. You know, that's something that I share as well. It's like, that's it. Simplify Mm -hmm. everything back to that. If we we if we're consciously aware of our union with the Lord and we're living mm-hmm. by faith, not by sight, we live in the realm of the kingdom and it just becomes more and more and more open to us, right? Everything's accessed. That's our that's new creation core life, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Internal life. It's just union and faith, which are the way that's in. Simple. Love it. Yeah, simple. It's simple. It's simple. He's simplifying us back, and we're so loved so 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 loved and heaven is so for us and so surrounding us and we're so safe and the yeah. enemy's just lied to us for a very long time and intimidated us and caused us to live out of our soul responses thinking that's who we are and that's life and it's not yeah <laughs> so. i think you're hitting a key point there i think this is why the conversation's been shut down because the enemy doesn't want us to know angels angels are super powered and you know we we need to start talking about them so i really Thank you for letting me share on this today. I appreciate it. It's such a privilege to have you on, Justin, because I, I mean, obviously we trust and love you and we know you and and you have been engaging with angels for a very long time, like you said. So you're not, this isn't just theoretical for you. No. This, is, this is rooted in scripture. It's experiential in your life. Yeah. And you've seen the fruit time and time again. And that's what happens as well. When the angels show up, there's power happens. Absolutely. And I'll share a couple more stories with you guys next week, but power happens you know as, you, as many of you know you know they they heaven doesn't show up and then you just go on as like no. it's all right you're changed things change here they and they up. also bring synchronicities you know where two things you know like you meet a person at just the right time yeah. or you're in the right place at the right time or you felt to go over here or you felt to call a person often yeah. angels synchronize all of that it's, it's phenomenal they'll make sure the other person's there at the right time as well they make yeah. sure they they work as teams. It's, it's phenomenal how they work. And, you know, they're very involved with our lives. They never, in fact, there's, it says he will command them in all of your ways. So there's never even a moment that isn't angelic. Our yeah. whole lives are angelic because Jesus's life is angelic as well. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, they're to minister to the heirs of salvation and they understand mm -hmm. the holiness of who we are as the children of God. Right. And, and it's all about Jesus, isn't it, as well? I find yeah. that everything, every supernatural encounter reveals mm -hmm. more of Jesus to us. You know, That's so right. And that's the whole thing. When we talk about angels, we're still, in a way, talking about Jesus because they're part of his family. Yeah. They're part of his tribe. They're part of he's the Lord of spirits. So it's all connected to Jesus. So even if we talk about angels, we'll end up experiencing Jesus because they carry his essence yeah. and they serve him, you know. Absolutely. So good. So good. Yeah. So we agree with heaven that each one of you will see angels this week. Mm -hmm. See the angels that are around you. Be awakened to being able to see clearly the realm that we live in beyond anything that you've known. And I'm including myself in that as well. Amen. More Jesus, just more. more. And knowing your, knowing your immense value as well, knowing, you know, you are royalty. You absolutely, we are, we just are. The, these are the facts of our life. You know, it's just, just wonderful. Yeah. So Justin, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're just amazing. Thank, thank you. you thank you, everyone. Love you guys. Yeah. We love you and I'm really excited to see what happens next week. <laughs> Have an amazing week. Love you all. Bye for now.